On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, when you need to dig a trench, forget the shovel. We're using the ditch witch for more power. <laughs> Welcome back, my friends, to another edition of Check 6 Aviation. We need to dig a trench out back there to connect the power to the workshop and it has to be two feet deep and well let's just face it a shovel in texas clay ain't gonna cut it so we, we went ahead and rent to our friends at home depot here they are not a sponsor by the way but if they want to sponsor this channel they're more than welcome to and uh this is going to be interesting because i've never run one of these before as a matter of fact i was uh kind of you know playing around with it having a little fun getting it off the trailer so let's start this puppy up Let's see, we've got the key right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Alright, so let's see here, we got... There's that. Alright. Not quite sure which way that's supposed to go. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I am actually. It's supposed to go like that. And then... It's back here now. Before you begin any digging operation, be sure to call the three digit number that is per, that is for your state. Here in Texas, it's Texas 811, uh, or you know, just 811 on the phone. And uh, I have done that, and they've pretty much everything for the utilities is back there in the causeway. I am not sure about the electric lines coming in here. Um, let's see, where is, there's a underground cable there for phone and stuff. So I would imagine that it would come over this way. And which is okay because once I get towards the fence, that's gonna be where I stop with the ditch witch so that I don't hit any cables here. And I've got, I, I've got this line marked for um, whereabouts where I'm going to dig this trench. Uh, it's gonna be two feet deep, as I said, and we're gonna sink, we're gonna put in the, these, uh, the PVC pipes for a conduit. So let's get to it. It's at this point that I'm about to make a critical mistake that will come back to bite me later in this project. Let's see if you can spot the mistake. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think it is. We've got the trench. Eh, not exactly the straightest, but hey, it works. All right, now that we've got the trench dug outside, I've measured from the corner to about the beginning of the trench, and it's about two feet. So what I've done is I've, this is about three and a half inches here. This is about three and a half inches here. And I've marked here, and down there because I'm going to have to bore through here to allow room for the pipe um, and I'm going to install a one by one inch by three inch I'm going to cut this down to, to size and use this as kind of a shim to install the the box here so let's get to it all right, I now have 
the shim boards installed, but as you see, it's kind of cracked right here when I was screwing it in, and also up here. Uh, I this crack is this crack over here is quite extensive, so I don't want yeah I don't really want to crack it anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a pilot hole for these two installment holes right here. So here we go. Well, the pilot hole worked. No cracking whatsoever. And yeah, probably something I should have done beforehand, but oh well, it is what it is. All right, so the next step is I want to find out whereabouts the approximate center is of this hole because this is the where the PVC pipe is going to come into up through here for the cable to the outer box. So measuring from the wall, I see that it is right about two inches. So I'm going to measure in two inches from here. And that's about where I'm going to drill through the through each of the yeah, the pieces of wood here. Actually, those pilot holes worked so well that I think I'm going to remove this box again and redo the, the one by threes. And this time I'll use pilot holes for the screw holes there so that I don't split the wood. So let's get to it. Actually, now that this box is off, this would be a good, great time to bore the hole for through each of these two by fours. Now, I did not have the proper tools, so I ran out to Lowe's, and not only did I get an extension for my new paddle bit, which will help down there, it'll also help when I have to bore up through there into, you know, through the, you know, the top plate and also above the gable. Yeah, that's it. Sometimes I have trouble with the, this construction terminology because, well, I'm a truck driver. I don't build stuff for a living. Well, that didn't quite go as planned. All right, we got one done. Let's get the other one done. All right, we got it started at least. This will be the time for the extension now. See, that's got a long ways to go, all the way down there. And a short time to get there. Come on, boring bit. Yeah, well, it's gonna have to finish on its own. All right, we've got white. We can see through the bottom now. All right, I've got both boards replaced. All of the screws are in place now, including these two. However, I'm not going to put the box back in just yet because, well, with the box there, it's just going to get in the way of sinking the first hole, the first PVC pipe all the way down there into the bottom of the, uh, the structure. So we're going to get that done now and we'll be back. Well, this is going to get very interesting because it is all the way up to the ceiling, to the, to the roof. I knew I was going to have to cut it, 
but fact is I'm not quite sure just how long I'm going to have to cut it. So I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure all the way through the hole and up to the box and add two feet because this pipe has to be two feet deep. All right, so I've got it all the way down there touching the ground and it is at 62 inches. I'm going to leave a half inch protrusion through the box and just add 24 so 62 86 and a half inches so that's where I'm going to cut it I am going to cut the pipe at 86 and a half inches all right so I actually made a mark at 90 inches figuring that I can always uh, use the you know I can always cut off the extra if I absolutely need to so now that I've got my mark here we go. Let's get let's get to, to cutting here. Bam! There we go. And then there's the Madeline returning a hammer. All right. Let's see how much better this goes in now. Yeah, get it around the wire, get it up over there, get it in here through the hole. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, a little bit down here. We'll go ahead and coax that down. Boom, all the way to the bottom. And it fits completely. So, like I said, we'll go ahead and go outside and continue this trench all the way to that pipe. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Should but, we stand there? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. All right, now we see it. See, when I bored through here, there was a bit of a lip that was preventing the pipe coming all the way down to the ground. But as you can see, we are right on target. Uh, that's a good feeling. Not in love. Well, that's clearly not going to work and what I'm probably going to have to do is I'm going to have to come up with another $300 for a deposit to rent the ditch witch again for another four hours. Of course, I won't need the full four hours. I'll probably have that uh, little section done in about maybe 20 minutes, if that. You know, that's probably from taking the ditch witch off the trailer again and then getting it back on the trailer. And, uh, but yeah, after that, will be smooth sailing and so in the meantime what I'll end up doing is I'll work on other stuff like finishing the front facade on the insulation maybe doing some uh, interior wiring and getting the insulation on the window facade over here and then closing up the soffit and fascia so we don't have any more dust flying inside from the outside so this is the part of the project where I decided that, yeah, let's go ahead and get further on the outside. And let me tell you, this stuff that I'm working with here is actually pretty simple because it's all one four by eight foot sheet and I'm using these capped one inch nails to put it up as you know, the, you know, there's there are some instructions on the, on the board, on the, uh, the, the shiny part that say to use capped one inch nails or you can use some sort of staple or, or something, but uh, the, the one inch nails work pretty well. And the, yeah, I mean, I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. And you'll see here in a moment as we get closer. Now this is where, uh, now if you notice that, yep, right here, right here, this is where I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and mark where the windows are. And then I take it over to a table and I find out, yeah, I, I use a, you know, like a carp carpenter square, you know, like something that I can go ahead and just get a straight line. And um, I, I had measured it was what, nine and three eighths inches from the seam. And 
I bought this off of Amazon. This was the, oh my God, this is like the best tool that I've ever used so far. It's a, like a, a, a hot knife. Uh, not really a hot knife, but it is made specifically for cutting into styrofoam. And I figured I would be able to use this later on in the actual airplane build when I get into the composite portion, uh, especially if I decide to make any composite forms, um, you know, working with styrofoam and as a kind of a mold for fiberglass work. Now, because there's going to be a lot of fiberglass work in the RV-10, from what I understand. Now, here we go. The, it fits over the window like a glove and then I go ahead and tape it and get everything nailed down working diligently like a beaver cut a new piece get a good seam going it's reading you know, about nine nails in total and on to the final piece now I did go ahead and use that same tool and cut everything down at the bottom. I, there was like, what, about maybe, oh, two inches that I cut off the bottom to make it fit exactly perfect. And I will go ahead and end this video here shortly. Please give me a like, a thumbs up. Yeah, tell me what you really enjoyed about this video. Tell me what you really want to see. If, it, if you like the longer content like this, yeah, trying to keep it about... 15 to 17 minutes or so uh, if you I know you're jonesing to see this airplane built and I am just excited to get to that portion too but I need to get this workshop done so uh, by all means support help support this channel with a like a subscribe and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any of the other videos uh, also if you haven't met, if this is the first video that you're watching, go see the rest of our uh, of, of the playlist for the Airplane Factory version 1.0. Our next video coming up is going to be with Paul at Control Approach. Until next time, remember this time and always check your six.